Hi, I'm Tim Mahoney, Director of Patterns of Evidence. A lot of people who have seen the film have really appreciated all the great interviews we have with scholars and Egyptologists, but there's one in particular that stands out to many people and they just want to know more. In fact, we get emails that say, could you tell us more about David Roll? And I got to know David Roll back in 2002. In fact, I was uh, editing uh, and uh, it came to me that, uh, a thought came to me that I should stop editing. I was in a really difficult uh, part of the film and uh, go to my library. And it was there that I found David Roll's book. And when I looked at it and I saw what he was talking about at the site of Avaris, I knew I had, to, I had to meet this man. And so we contacted him and I flew, my wife and I flew to England, and I made the trip to his home. His contribution was just amazing because he was the one, the first one to really point out the evidence for the early Israelites in this city underneath the city of Ramesses, the city of Avaris. And so what I'm going to share with you in the next few weeks is a lecture series that when I flew David to Minneapolis, uh, I had a lecture series uh, created where he would give some of his talks. And we had a small audience, and we're going to share with you some of that in the next few weeks. So I hope you enjoy David Roll's lectures. Is it a history that never happened? So we'll deal first of all with this idea of the myth. And bear with me, because the good news comes later on. But first the negativity. Now we all know who the Pharaoh of the Exodus is, don't we? It's Yul Brynner. <laughs> and Moses is Charlton Heston. So Cecil B. DeMille has given us this pedigree of what you expect for the Old Testament story of the Exodus that it's the time of Ramesses II. That's the, the figure in history that Yulbrunner portrays. And it's that tie-in between Ramesses II and Moses which has caused all the troubles. And what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to introduce you to two books. One is called It Ain't Necessarily So. It's written by Sturges and McCarthy. That's two English authors. And then the second book is a more famous book. It's by Finkelstein and Silberman called The Bible Unearthed, and some of you may have read that book. It's basically the Bible not unearthed, because they come to the conclusion that there's nothing that they've ever dug up in Israel that actually confirms the biblical stories. So I'm going to give you one or two quotes from those books, and we're going to really focus, first of all, on the main issue, one that has played its role since the 1950s, and that is the site of Jericho. Jericho is the key to the misunderstanding and also the reinterpretation which is going to get us on the right road to discover the real historical Bible. With Ramesses II as the Pharaoh of the Exodus, we end up with a date for the conquest of the Promised Land around 1210 BC. And that's the time when we have the stories of Exodus 40 years earlier and the conquest in 1210. So between 1250 and 1210 is the normal date range for Moses. And what John McCarthy has to say on Jericho is this. When the site at Jericho was reworked in the 1950s, it was discovered that the walls had fallen down long before Joshua and his people were supposed to have arrived, and that at that time Jericho was almost certainly unoccupied. The conquest of the Promised Land by the children of Israel began to evaporate into thin, hazy air. This guy, John McCarthy, was one of the Beirut hostages. You remember back in the... 1970s when Hezbollah captured various people and put them in prison. So he got an interest in this part of the world uh, at that time and he started to study the whole story of the Bible and biblical archaeology. And as he interviewed all these different experts he got these sorts of reactions. On the conquest he had this to say. The fact that the archaeological evidence at Jericho and other sites mentioned the Bible refutes the conquest story came as a shock to him. Archaeologist after archaeologist told me that not only was there no conquest of Canaan by Joshua and the children of Israel, but the Israelites were actually Canaanites. The implications of that are huge. If they're Canaanites and they never came out of Egypt, then the whole biblical story collapses, that they are effectively indigenous peoples of the region. Now, how to explain this to you? Well, this is your first complicated diagram, okay? At the moment, it's quite straightforward. We have over here dates going from old to more recent in the BC period. 
And then we've got three columns we're going to fill in. We have Jericho, which we'll do last, Egypt and archaeology. First one is archaeology. So here's our first dive into terminologies. Right, LB means late bronze or late bronze age. So this is the LB2A, that's the earliest of the late bronze twos. And then we have LB2B, Iron Age 1A and Iron Age 1B. So again, we're moving towards the present. These are the older strata and the later strata. Now, if we put in some important biblical events, and this is the conventional view of things, we have the sojourn in the late bronze 2A period, probably a little bit earlier as well. We have Moses and the Exodus in what's called the late bronze 2B. And then, of course, following that, we have the early judges in the Iron Age. And again, the late judges in the Iron Age 1B. That's how it's, the scheme is worked out normally uh, by academics. Now, if I put the Egyptian data in, this will start to become clearer. I'm sure you've all heard of a king called Akhenaten, the heretic pharaoh. Well, I've placed him in there in what we call late bronze 2A, the late 18th dynasty. He's the predecessor of King Tutankhamun. Then above him, we have our famous King Ramesses of the 19th dynasty. Then we have the 20th dynasty with Ramesses III. And then the 20th and 21st dynasty going on towards the present there. So, Akhenaten and Tut were contemporary with the Sojourn period. And Moses is a contemporary of Ramesses. And then the Judges period is the 20th dynasty onwards. That's how it's all worked out. But, if we look at Jericho, we get a bit of a surprise. Because there is one late Bronze Age house in this era, here, and otherwise we have an Iron Age town, Iron Age 1B town up there, settled on top of the mound, and then in the middle we have that. Nothing. No Jericho. No buildings, no people, no pottery. And that is where the conquest is placed. That is why people say the conquest is a myth. Because there was no Jericho as walls fell down. Now that is true. That is all archaeological fact. Okay, so something's wrong here. Either academics have got things wrong or the Bible's wrong. Which is it? As you can see, David is a great communicator and he really lays out the problem that the Exodus uh, story is facing. So join us next week when we'll have more of the David Roll Lecture Series.